Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. In this session we're covering anatomy and physiology and more specifically we're looking at joints. So obviously a joint is where two or more bones meet and joints are divided up into three different types depending on how freely the bones can actually move. Now this is uh, assumed knowledge from your GCSEs. You, we expect you to have covered this at GCSE level so it should be an element of revision and so I'm going to go through it quite quickly. Now if you do have issues or problems then do feel free to pause the screencast and take notes but hopefully this will be more of a revision session for you when you're starting your AS. So let's look at the classifications of joints very quickly. There's the immovable, the slightly movable and the freely movable also named the fibrous, cartilaginous and synovial. Examples of those would be the cranium, the vertebrae or in this instant it would be the hip or the knee. So the giveaway is in the name the type of joint uh, this one here is the fixed the fibrous joint and that's how they're fixed so there's no movement they're very very stable and they interlock and overlap and a good example would be the joint within your cranium. For the cartilaginous joint as it says there it's slightly movable so obviously more than the fixed and an example would be in the vertebral column. So let's have a look at some of the characteristics. You can only move a little bit, fine. They're held together by ligaments and joined by white fibrocartilage. So that again is very important to note that characteristic. An example would be vertebral column or you could also say the ribs and the sternum which are slightly movable. Lastly is the synovial joint and this is one that you might have heard of before and this is your freely movable joint. The example here we have is the shoulder or you could have uh, in the wrist. So this allows quite a significant amount of movement compared to the others but it is held in place by ligaments. Again very important point to note. The significant difference though is the synovial fluid that lubricates the joint capsule and the cartilage within that joint and we're going to look at that in more detail and examples would be knee, wrist, elbow. So when we're talking about a synovial joint there are different types and we're going to look at this one uh, here just very briefly. You notice how even though this is uh, as this is the shoulder you can see it has a joint capsule. You have the synovial cavity where the synovial fluid is actually kept and you also have the ligaments there. Let's have a look at another example in a little bit more detail. So this is a, hopefully an image you might have seen before. So here again we have the joint cavity. This is this aspect here. You have the synovial membrane. Now this is this inner layer here and this actually excretes the synovial fluid into the joint cavity and prevents friction being caused between these two aspects here which are called your articular cartilage or hyaline cartilage and this is that smooth egg-like surface that you would see on the ends of bones. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is pause the screencast and have a go at this small table here. Obviously you've got the feature, ligament, synovial, articular cartilage and joint capsule. Write in what the structure of them is and then what you think the function is. So just pause the screencast there and have a go. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you've managed to fill that out. I, I'm not going to give the answers to that, but we will look at that in the session. All right, so let's uh, move on. Let's have a look at how this is going to manifest in an exam question. This is an actual exam question. So using your anatomical and physiological knowledge to complete the table below for the player's right knee. All you have to do then is identify what the joint is of the player's right knee not to the one that you're looking at and the joint type so that's where this knowledge we've just been looking at is very very important so one mark joint type done so we're going to look at the types of synovial joints very quickly because again it, we have that element of assumed knowledge but you can pause it as I mentioned before whenever you need so there is the gliding joint the hinge joint pivot ball and socket saddle joint, conjoloid, and that's your lot.
So what we're going to look at here is the movement patterns and this is uh, again how you'll be examined on this uh, on your paper. So that's why it's important that we start tackling it straight away. The important thing to note is your starting point. The anatomical position is principally the starting point before any movement. So this is what uh, it would look like. So arms, palms facing forwards, facing uh, facing forwards, no flexion or extension anywhere. All right. So let's take a look at some of these images here and we can see what types of actions are taking place. So from the anatomical position, we need to be able to identify what's actually happening at the knee. So here we can see that there is a flexion occurring at the knee. Now the definition of a flexion is when that angle there of the joint shortens. So how that would look on a little stick man is like that. So the angle there is now shortened so there is a bending at that joint. Another example would be the um, hurdles here, the guy's back leg. So when a limb bends the angle of the joint gets smaller therefore we say that there is a flexion. Now if we reverse this and we say that this guy's leg moves forward into that position there or even further so from there round to there we can turn around and say there is an extension so when a joint or limb is straightened there the that's the basic principles so let's have a look at this very quick video here what I want you to do then is identify what's actually happening at the elbow so is there a flexion or is there an extension Look at the elbow. Okay, so hopefully what you'd have identified is that as he draws the racket back, there is an extension, but then as he draws the racket forwards, there is a flexion at the elbow. And that's principally what we're looking at. So here are some more examples of uh, movement. And here's the explanation of each one of them. So here we have the rotation, so turning of the head. Adduction and abduction, hopefully you'll have heard of before, but this is moving the, the limbs towards and away from the body's central line. We have pronation and supination. So this is where you have uh, a turning inwards and outwards of the wrist and horizontal shoulder flexion, moving the arm in a forwards horizontal plane and also here we have horizontal extension. So let's look at what those two look like. So here we have our willing candidate. And here we can see that the arm is back and then he's going to draw it forwards. So we would say that there is a flexion occurring here and it's in the horizontal plane as in the horizon. So therefore we call that horizontal flexion. and on the opposite side. Now we pause it here. What action is going to take place from here? So there we would have had two examples. One of horizontal flexion where there is a shortening at the shoulder joint as it comes towards the body and then one on the backhand was as it drew away. And there's the example up there as well. So returning the arm to the abduction position. Don't worry too much if you're a little bit confused. Hopefully you'll be okay with this, but we're going to look at these a lot more within the session. We have a few more here. So we have what's known as lateral flexion. Uh, this is at the side and the lateral extension when this angle is increasing. Protraction is moving the scapula away from the spinal column, so pushing your shoulders forwards. You have retraction, which is where you're pulling your hands back. And then last but not least, you have depression and elevation. All right, so let's very quickly look at uh, what this would uh, be like in an exam question. So again, we've got to identify what the joint is. Here, we're looking at the joint type, so we need to know that, and here, this is how the, it will manifest in an exam is the movement. So we've got to know the type of movement that's taking place. Let's have a look at another one here. So this one is talking about the hip joint. So we need to identify the type 
and we also need to identify the type of movement that's occurred at that hip joint. Okay, um, if you've got any problems, just go back through the screencast, pause it at the right point, go through it again, and I, I'm sure you'll get it no problem at all. Um, thanks very much. I'll speak to you soon.